Hey, 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 happy Thursday. It's me, Queen B. Um, how are y'all? I've missed y'all. Have y'all missed me? I believe you have. I want to talk about something today. And I want to talk about the beginning of sorrows. And I don't know if you spend a whole lot of time reading the word, but I believe we're in the beginning of sorrows, according to the word, and we're going to go there. Number one, um, pestilences, the coronavirus, this disease has affected the entire world. Number two, um, wars and rumors of wars. We got, we've had political debates, um, racial tension, and all of these things. And then um, nation rising against nation, kingdom against kingdom. We're having, I've been, I've been looking at clips where it says um, volcanoes are erupting. Uh, we've had floods, we've had storms. It's, we've just, it's just been a lot of different strange things going on. But as we look in the word and we continue in it, on a daily basis, these things should not be a surprise to us. It's just showing us that the word of God, the Bible is real and um, that the prophecy in there is coming to pass. And we should be paying attention to what's going on and, and look at what's going on in the world and say, in the world and say, okay, yeah, that's what the word said was going to happen. I saw that. I've been reading that. And now I'm seeing it right in, before my eyes. And so we have to get to a point where when we see things going on in the world, we, we know that, hey, I read this in the word and this is real. OK, so right now uh, we're in the beginning of sorrows, which means that uh, Jesus is on his way back. And, and, you know, a lot of people say, oh, y'all been saying that for so long, Jesus is on his way back. Yeah, but it's different this time. You know why? Because the coronavirus affected the whole world. It didn't affect just one country or one city. It affected the whole world. And so let's go to the word. Y'all ready to go to the word? Let me put my glasses on. These are my computer glasses. And so I use these uh, to protect from the um, blue light the gamma rays or something that comes out of the computer screen. So I'm going to share my screen right now. We're going to go to blueletterbible.org. I don't know if y'all have heard of it, but it's a good way to study, especially if you're on your computer. All right. And so Blue Letter Bible, I'm already at beginning of sorrow. See, I've typed it in there. And then when I press enter or press the arrow, it, it, it's going to bring up wherever that, that phrase is located. It says in Matthew 24, 8. Now, if I want to look at it in King James or any of these versions, I just click on that and then press the arrow again. So like, um, let's, let's just go to the verse. So it's Matthew 24, 8. It says, all these are the beginning of sorrows. And this is, we know we're in the King James. So if I go, if I do NLT and then press the arrow again, uh, it says, but all the all this is only the first of the birth pains with more to come. Oof. Ooh. And so, um, you know, you can look at it. <coughs> Excuse me, whichever verse, uh, whichever version you like. I, I mostly default to the King James version when I want to um, just get some other, you know, ways it can be said. I do uh, typically like to click on um, the, uh, the different versions. But right here too, if you want the red letter version, um, you can click on that and then it's gonna show you every the, all the red letters. So you got your copy options. I mean, it's a good tool to use. Uh, you can cite it, like if you were writing a paper, if you're in Bible college, I'm in Bible college. I'm getting my, my life coach license, yes. And I thank y'all for everyone that wrote me a recommendation letter. I do appreciate it. Okay, and so um, 
let so in verse eight, Matthew chapter 24, verse eight, it says, but all this is only the first of the birth pains with more to come. Well, we, it was beginning to start. Let's go back to King James Version. I want to read it in that version. It says, and all these are the beginning of sorrows. So what are the beginning of sorrows? Let's go back up. Um, let's go to verse 20 to verse 3. It says, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And a lot of people ask that, you know, they see things going on and say, okay, wait. What, what's happening? You know, why, why are all these things happening? What's going on? And, you know, some people have no clue. You know why? Because they don't spend time in the word. They don't know God or, or they don't want to know God. And so when things in this world start happening like this, they panic because they don't know what's going to happen. They don't know why it's happening but you know we as christians know especially if you're reading the word so let's go back it says uh verse four it says and jesus answered and said unto them take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying i am christ so a lot of people are going to be portraying themselves to be christ and they're going to deceive a lot of people it says, and shall deceive many. It didn't say to receive a, deceive a little, a little, a, a small group of people. It says that, and shall deceive many. It's going to be many coming saying that they are Christ and there's, they're going to receive many. Okay. Deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. It's not the end, but it's the beginning of sorrows. For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. How plain is that? We've been having earthquakes. We've been having famines, pestilences, coronavirus. That's all over. And then what is said? And all these are the beginning of sorrows. So we are living, we are living in the beginning of sorrows. And so the best place to be now is to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to be saved. You say, what, what does being saved mean? Being saved means that um, you have repented of your sins. You turn to the Lord. Let him know, I don't want to do this no more. Believe that Christ died on the cross for your sins. Believe that and accept it. And turn from your wicked ways. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit gives you the power to be a witness. Okay? And so we can't continue. I mean, these things in the Bible that I'm reading are, are happening as we speak. And so that means we're at the beginning of sorrows. Beginning of sorrows means it's going to get worse. So if you're having a hard time handling what's happening now, wait till later okay at the same time this is happening also in the last days there's going to be a, a transference of wealth from the hands of the wicked into the hands of the righteous we have to position ourselves to know when to step into the right opportunity and i i found one i found one and, and people don't believe me because they're so used to being scammed and everything. But I found an opportunity. It ties directly into uh, future technology. And um, it's, it's, I believe this vehicle is going to, um, this is one of those things that's going to, where this transfer of wealth is going to happen. And so some people think money's going to fall out the sky. That ain't going to happen. You got to position yourself to be able to receive money, which means you need to have a business open or you need to be participating in something that's going to, a platform that's going to bring you that money. And so, um, you know, we are in the beginning of sorrows. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a time of sorrow for some, but for those that are in crisis, it's a time of joy, it's a time of opportunity. 
you know, it's a time of expectation. And so uh, we need to, to um, be thinking about that. Let's go, let's go over there to um, where it's talking about the transference of wealth. Um, let's type in last days. I know it's in James somewhere, but we'll see. So yeah, in James chapter five, verse three, it says, um, your gold and silver is cankered and the rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is kept, which, which is of you kept back by fraud crier, and the cries of them that the, the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Saboa. It says, You have lived in pleasure on the earth, have been wanton, you have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter, you have condemned and killed the just. And he does not resist you. And it says, be patient, brethren, to the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband waited for the precious fruit of the earth and had long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. So be ye also patient, establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. And so right here, it starts at verse one. It says, go to now you rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted. Your garments are moth-eating. And that's where it comes in. Well, we started at verse 3. And it says, ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. And so then in Proverbs, I think chapter 13, maybe. It talks about... Um, It may not be 13. Let me see. Okay, let's see. Laid up four. There we go. Laid up four. And I'm going to press enter. Okay, right there. Proverbs 13, 22. It says, a good, man leaveth, a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. So, the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the righteous. Are you righteous according to God's standard? That means there's going to be a transfer of wealth, but you got to be in a position to receive it. You got to have your eyes, your spiritual eyes open. So that means, that don't mean, that does not mean money will fall from the sky. It means you have to be open to opportunity. Some people are so closed-minded and they think one way and, and, and they don't see what is happening. We do have the opportunity to receive wealth, but we got to be looking for it. And uh, we got to have our spiritual eyes open and our natural eyes open. The word says that the people... Um, the children, the people in this world are wise in children of light when it comes to finances and things. So we need to have our eyes open. And that's all I have. So we are at the beginning of sorrows, especially with coronavirus, because it has affected not just one nation, but every nation on the earth. And it has affected us greatly. Some of us have been affected greatly. Some of us haven't been touched. But, you know, um, we've never had anything that affected the entire world. So this is the beginning of sorrows. Are you ready for what's going to happen next? If this is the, begin the beginning of sorrows, what do you think is going to happen next? Okay. So we need to be standing in a holy place, living a holy life and making sure that our heart, soul, and spirit are ready for this next life. So that's all I have for today. God bless you. Remember to like, subscribe, share, comment below. 
Say hi, Queen B. <laughs> I like it when you do that. You can send me an, an email at sheisvic at gmail.com. And y'all have a good rest of your weekend.